approved. And we're about ready to start in Proverbs chapter 3. And there is like a million tons of meat in Proverbs 3. It is, it is a, a very profound chapter of God. Uh, you know, and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to have you guys read, but it starts off, my son. So, now, before he was talking about how to get to be his son in the first couple of chapters, was he not? How to, people, how to get to that right position. Now, who's he talking to? Someone that's heard the Spirit, someone that's responded to it. Amen? So, what would happen if somebody wasn't his son tried to apply these things? You ever heard somebody that... You, Facebook amazes me anymore. I'm not on it that much anymore. But if you ask... People people ask for prayer that's never been to church. That's great. But 90% of the people that respond don't go to church. And they're in Jesus' name, prayers, praying. I was like, who are you praying to? You know? If you love God, you keep His commandments. Who are you praying to? You know? Every, every Tom, Dick, and Harry's praying. But who are they praying to? Oh, I'm praying for you. I'm glad you all agree, believe in prayer. But just try to have a conversation with them about Jesus. And they don't... They're not going to agree on the same things because they're not reading the word. They don't know the word. They're tossed to and fro with every contrary doctrine. But it's a sign of our times. So guess what though? These promises, this wisdom doesn't work unless you're a son or, or a daughter. But I hear all kinds of people trying to apply them and get frustrated when they don't think it works. Well guess what? They were never in a place for it to work. It's not that God failed them. It's not that God didn't keep his promises. They just never got themselves. And some people say, well, I'm saved by grace, not by faith. Works is dead. And yeah, well, God also said he didn't know you by his works. The Bible says that uh, Abraham was justified by his works, by his faith. You know? So, you know, how many know, <laughs> how many know Isaac was a work? <laughs> you know? He was willing. It took faith to obey it, but there was an action that responded to his faith. Are you all with me? So many people, so how many know it takes an action to respond to our faith that brings these things up, up together? You know, it's, you know, some people say, well, the blessings of God aren't conditional. I just flow in them. Well, you know what? It's a road map. You can flow in them all you want. You can go in a circle all you want. Stay down there as a baby Christian going around the turf. And that's the reason why the Apostle Paul talked to somebody. Listen, he's like, you still shouldn't be on the milk. Get up off of it. And there's a whole group. We have tons of people today that just want to stay there. I'm here. Feed me so I can go about and do what I want. There's a little cartoon I, I put up uh, many years ago. It said, "Hey, I'm so glad I came to you. I want to go to church and stay in my and stay, but stay in my sandwich and just come where I was comfortable and nobody convicted me. I'm so happy to be here." And the pastor's shaking his hand, you know, and had a full church. And it's funny, funny, ha ha. And nobody in their right mind would usually say that. But the truth is, that's usually about how everybody is going today. That's yeah. just how they show up. I, I don't want to change. I just want you to make me feel good in this uncomfortable season. But the Word of God will make you uncomfortable. The Word of God will challenge you, but don't ever let the enemy get you so focused on those things that you forget how much it blesses you, how much it causes you to rejoice, how much it causes you to overcome. I mean, there, there, is, there is the goodness of God, man. It's it just good. You know, it, 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 if it's... He, he, he corrects. He does all these things, but all those things produce joy. It's just di diverse temptations, and what else? And trials produce joy. I I'm paraphrasing the scripture right now. So, it produces joy. But how many know that it can only produce joy if you're flowing with the wisdom of God, knowing what is coming through that circumstance? But if you don't have wisdom, you'll be blinded by the trials. You'll be blinded by the temptations. You'll be blinded by the things that are coming at you. And your, your hope will fade away. Your faith will fade away. And you won't have the wisdom to understand the goodness that's about to come through in your life. Right. But wisdom brings sure promises. Isn't that good? And so, you know, that is why it's so important to know wisdom. It's not if you're going to go through something, but how many want to go through something with the beforehand knowledge of what God is going to do for you during, through, and after? Amen. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. That sure makes things better. I'm so glad he gives me prophetic words sometimes. You know, not, not all the prophetic words I ever got were all about how he was going to bless me and flow through me. Some of them were just guidance how to get through a difficult season to be an overcomer on the other side and what came through of it that kept that kept helped me keep the course because I had a sure word from God so I didn't throw in the towel middle ways. Amen. Amen. And so... How, what, what is that called? It's called wisdom. And that is why, you know, everybody says, oh, read Proverbs. Well, you know what? I guarantee you the, the first time I read Proverbs, it dealt with it. I, I could apply it 100% to every natural part of me. And the first 100 times after that, I could apply it to the natural part of me. Then all of a sudden, something started happening, and it started becoming supernatural. And then it started becoming even more than supernatural. But, you know, Proverbs is natural. You can take everything we're going to talk about and apply it in the natural realm, and you'll gain wisdom that will blow everybody's mind around you. But I'm going to tell you, it's even so much more deeper than that. And that's where God wants you to go. But first, you, what do you have to deal with? The natural. Amen? Amen? So, he's not talking to somebody that's not listening right now, is he? The, are these promises aren't for somebody that's not listening, are they? Now, somebody would say, well, preacher, you're making that conditional. No, I'm not. I think anybody can have it. He said, I died that all shall come to know me. He said, who that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Uh, who, how many people have an ear? Well, some people say, well, we're all God's children. Well, you know what? I guess it's kind of true, but I really get tired of that cop out. Because you know what? The, the Bible finally talks about some devil's children. It talks about God's chosen and it talks about those that's been grafted into the vine. And if I, if I was already his, I wouldn't be grafted into anything. Big smile. Amen. Because he says that you're, well, what, I need some more scripture there. Well, it says that if you follow after the enemy, you've gone after your father, the father of lies. Now, who is your father? Amen. Is everybody getting something from this tonight before we get started? Do you see how important it is to operate the wisdom of God? Because as we go along, you might get lost in some of all this deep stuff we're getting. But if you'll just let God speak to you, he'll, 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 uh, he'll speak to you down deep. Amen. So who wants to read for it? Sister Allison. Reese. Isaiah. Rebecca. Bonnie. <laughs> How many more do I need? Two more. Heather and Bryce. And then I'll get some more on the next one. Thank you all for being so ready. All right, let's go. Is anybody else hot in here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. My son, forget not my loss, but let thine heart keep my commandments. My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. My child, don't forget what I teach you always. Amen. Good job, guys. Adults included. <laughs> so, let's just kind of break this down um, logically through the Spirit of God. If I tell you to not forget something, that means it's possible for you to do what? Forget it. Forget it. So, uh, speaking of which... <laughs> I've got another nugget that the Holy Spirit dropped on me for somebody here tonight. I don't know if it's online or else, but I'm going to share a little word that's going to go into this. Uh, do you know how you can uh, tell when you've really forgiven someone and let an offense go? Is when you can't replay it in your mind no more. You know, you can really tell when you've forgiven someone or let an offense go. It's not always about what we say verbally. I mean, that's the first part. 
but in our heart is whenever we can't recall that anymore. Because <coughs> see, sometimes they only stay because we rehearse them. Over and over and over. That's why the, the Philippians 4 8 says, Think on these things. Whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatever things are just, whatever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Right? So now he's telling you, Forget not. So here is something else he's telling you to think on. To keep this in the forefront. He's like, If you're going to rehearse something, let it be this. Now see, the enemy wants you to rehearse other things. That's why I spoke that. And he'll always, he'll always try to get somebody to offend you, to, to, get, to get you to walk in unforgiveness, because that separates you from the Father. You say, where's some word? Well, if you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. If you can't be forgiven, then uh, you know, light and darkness don't mix, and therefore you've already got yourself in a place where I don't need to go on, right? <laughs> so, my son, forget not my law. My teachings, what I've taught you. No. Now, what about if we bought into the new age where we're not under the law no more? I hey. don't have to worry about that. Nice. What in the world is going to be your guidepost to keep a moral life? To be holy as I am holy. Where would you start without it? Now, we've already said it's impossible to keep the law without Christ, and without the Holy Spirit, without grace enabling you. I'm not saying that. But we do have those things, so we can. But do you see where just simple, how much wisdom does somebody have to throw out to buy into something else? Right here it says, do not forget my law and my teachings. Well, you know what? I don't ever see another verse in the Bible that says disregard that. Now, there is some other verses that tells us to disregard a few things. Well, you say, where is that? Well, whenever they used to not be able to eat unclean meat, we used to not be able to eat bacon. Thank goodness bacon was, was, was reclaimed. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. I'm so happy that bacon was restored. <laughs> you know, it was something that was once unclean, and we could, we could not eat it. But said Peter knew that, and Peter was doing his best to keep the law and walk holy before God because he loved him. And God came to him in a dream and showed him that God had reclaimed bacon <laughs> and had to dust Gentiles with it <laughs> so that we could all be saved. So see, sometimes God, so what did God do there? He changed the law, but there's no question about it. He did it in such a, such a prophetic way, there'd be no denying that he changed something. And he did it all so that we could fit in. But he didn't change the whole thing, because Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, I came to fulfill it. And so, if you're going to have wisdom, guess what you might need to know? The law. And you know what? That's not popular today, is it? And, and you know what? As I studied the law as a young man, there was stuff I came to. I'm like, well, does this apply? Does that apply? I don't understand. He said, that's okay. Just keep reading. And you know what I did? I kept reading, and I kept reading, and I kept reading. And then you know what? It was a long time later. All of a sudden, it started to connect in my spirit with the day and time I was living in. Because see, God's Word, people would have you believe that was for then. Well, guess what? God's not bound by time or space. He doesn't even know what time is. So why would He make something that was just for this time, then apply to that time, and tell you to remember it? He would not do that. He just might have been talking to a different language to these group of people, and you have to be able to put it in your language for the wisdom of God for the time you're living in. I could go in more than that, but it's important to know the law. And and you know, most people that 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 get that that are breaking it, that, what it, and a lot of times, listen. You know why he didn't want them to eat pork? I'm, I'm getting a little ahead, but. He didn't want to eat them because it was unclean because it would hurt them. Mm -hmm. Every law he had was to protect them, but they took it as something to abuse them. <laughs> and today it's still the same way. There's laws that he still has not taken away. And when I talk to someone, I believe they love God. I believe they're chasing after him. But what they don't know is that thing is still a gateway to the demonic realm. 
And they will foolishly open that up and break that covenant with God, break that law, and let in all kinds of stuff in life, and then wonder why they're dealing with all that. And it's because they broke the law. Now, God came to fulfill the law. God came to, to do it a way where it'd make it easy for us to overcome it, you know. But, you know, if you say, well, how, you, did you know it all? No, I didn't, but I listened to the Holy Spirit, and when he moved, I moved, and it kept me out of a lot of foolish things until I had a better understanding of wisdom which we're learning now, which I'm still learning, to be able to say, oh, <laughs> I now know what you were mean in there. I now know why you told me don't do that. Amen? But you'll see, as soon as you confront anyone, they become very hostile, very defensive if they're breaking something. Something they think is, well, that's you're just religious. I didn't call you anything. I didn't even want to talk to you. You came and asked me. I, I, I find up saying that a lot anymore. <laughs> You're, do you remember you asked me? <laughs> I didn't come asking you. I didn't force my opinion. Of, not my opinion. I didn't force the word of God on you because it's not really my opinion. I don't mean that arrogantly. Uh, you asked me what the word said here. I showed you. And now you're offended with me. No, you're offended with the word. Right. And I'm not saying anything specific tonight because... I want to leave all hearts open. I might step on some toes if I did, but I pray, here's the thing, if you'll start studying it for yourself, you won't have to have preacher, you won't have to have prophet, you won't have to have pastor come up and deal with you on something when you're having a, your life's coming apart. I don't know why I'm still dealing with stuff. Well, shut the door. You know, well, you say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I already did. Well, have you repented, acknowledged it, and turned from it so the doorway's closed? Amen. All right, so don't forget his teachings, but keep them where? In your heart. Now, the Bible says every issue of life flows out of where? And the Bible says that out of the... Man, come on. Jesus. Out of... Out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So, if out of the heart our mouth speaketh, you know how many times people say something, oh, I didn't mean that. Don't you lie to me. You meant exactly what you said. It just got past your filter. Don't be. <laughs> just own it, repent, and turn. <laughs> Everybody like, oh my, he's in rare form again. Still. Still. Situation normal. Yeah. Hey. He lost. God won. He's still on the throne, and I'm going. I'm going up and on. Amen. Amen. So, take it to our hearts. So, how many of you know? If we're finding all kinds of things coming out of our mouth, say it's not faith based. Say it's not word of God based. Say maybe mummering, complaining, griping. <laughs> you know, maybe just you know, fearful. I. I I could list a whole lot of things that shows us what's in our heart. And the Bible says if we judge ourselves, we won't have to be judged. So how many times are you doing an account, doing a, doing a recollection of what's coming out of your mouth? Are you listening? And if you have children, they can be some of the best microphones. And you're like, where'd you hear that? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And maybe even some of your work people, you know, they'll be like, where did you get that from? And, but anyways, the, the deal is, is that that's why it's so important that we guard our heart. It's so important that we meditate upon what we put in our heart. And sometimes, you know, a lot of times people, you bring this up and everybody goes, oh yeah, I'm perfect. And I'm like, have you heard yourself lately? <laughs> <laughs> and now, do I mean that beating on you? No, absolutely not. I mean that because if you'll hear yourself, guess what you'll do? Change, and, and guess what? We all let, let's just cut the let's just cut to the chase tonight while we're concerned. We all have days when we say stupid things that we shouldn't say. That if we're that, we, that if we're close to God, He'll cause us to repent. Maybe we'll even catch it before they get it out of our mouth. But we but you know what? It happens if you you know how you catch it. It's if you're close to God, and the Word of God is in there, and the Word of God convicts you. You know, I have a day. You know, there's sometimes you just. 
But you know what? You, you repent, you turn, you judge yourself, and you still get to stay in the wisdom of God. But that's what wisdom says. That's why he says keep it close to you so you'll know when you're about to do something stupid. Mm -hmm. So you'll know when you're about to... <laughs> so it'll stop you before the mess. Not have to help you after. It didn't say it would make you instantly perfect. It's just a perfect mirror to judge your heart by and keep your heart in check. Do you know what used to be? People were very, uh, there was a, a season in the church where people were very legalistic. Everybody could tell you the law, but everybody was unhappy because nobody could complete it because they didn't realize who they were in Christ. They didn't realize who God was. And they were just all a bunch of miserable folks. Now listen, if I'm telling it wrong, then you can, but I'm telling you, that was the majority of church. Everybody loved God, but everybody was just, oh, we're all sinners saved by grace, just doing the best we can. I'll be glad when we get to heaven. You know, the, the message that God came to set you free, that God had came to, called you to have abundant life now, that was like a fairy tale. Right. I, I, I'm preaching the truth tonight. And so God, God but the, the good news is that, see, they, they knew the law. They had just never moved into the grace part. Now we've got people that's moved into the grace part and they forgot the law. So I, I'm just your preacher telling you, keep a happy balance. Keep the law. Keep it in your heart so that it can be quick to judge. Not to beat you up. If it beats you up, it's probably because you're not letting go. But anyways. <laughs> yeah. A amen. Do you, but it's a good thing. How else are you going to know? And, and so... Amen. So that that's it. So you you've got to judge your you gotta get it in your heart. And that takes time. It's anybody here ever marinated a steak? Mm -hmm. What happens if you just put it in there for five minutes? <laughs> Not much. But we live in a microwave society. So people want to marinate for about five minutes and think they've got it all, and they're only about a half inch deep Christians. <laughs> And God has called you to be fully submersed in the Word of God. Meditate day and night. And that means marinate. <laughs> marinate until it permeates your very heart, soul, and being so that everything you do, say, and think is held accountable to the Word of God. Now, back in the day, most people would have thought, oh man, more rules. It's too heavy. But the good news is that it's God's came. He, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. It's Christ that does the work, but it's all according to my obedience. All I got to do is be obedient. All I got to do is stay meditating in the word. Amen. I, I've preached tons on this, but that is what, that, that's what it takes. And, and then did it say uh, keep his... Uh, but yeah, but you know, he really does. He really mean commandments this is really strong, you know, isn't it? I mean, aren't they more suggestions? I mean, if you don't do it, it's not like he's really going to smack you dead, right? Now, listen, I wish I was joking, and I don't know why. Sometimes I'm not teaching against other churches. I'm just teaching it that all these all these things that I say, these aren't what ifs. Just for the record. These are what all, this, this is what it, what it is right now. And so, but the truth is, all you got to know is that God wants me to keep his commandments. So when someone, when I command you to do something, am I looking for your opinion? No. Am I even looking for your feedback? No. Am I looking for you to tell me how to do it better? No. What do I expect to happen when I give you a commandment? Do it. Do it. <laughs> what about if you don't think it's right? What about if it doesn't line up with your logic? What about if you see it and you think, well, that's just God's too loving for that. He wouldn't mean that. Here's one for you that I've been praying on. It may surprise all of y'all a little bit. But uh, you have two sides to a coin, and I believe God's calling up a third one for a broken change church to deal with something. And believe it or not, we've already had a lot of these people in here. We've ministered to a lot of them. But when I say homosexuality and lesbianism, what does that bring up inside your spirit? See, there, there's two there's two things going on in the church. There's a, there's a church that says, it's sin, be you separate. We love you. We're going to pray for you, but you're you. 
And then there's the group that says, well, God loves them no matter what. You just come in, you're part of us, you're all included. Uh, it's just a sin like anybody else, you're going to make heaven. Now, the Bible says that a homosexual won't make heaven, right? Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> the Bible says a homosexual will not make heaven. But it also says... It also says that a liar will not make heaven. Mm -hmm. It also says a drunkard will not make heaven. And how much of that is going on in the church? Yes. So, what about if we kicked every drunkard out of the church? What if we kicked every liar out? How much would it be? Now, the Bible says if you see a brother caught in sexual immorality, you go to him and he confuses his turn, it tells you to be separate. That's how I just talk about homosexuality. I mean, there's a lot going on. And believe it or not, we, we do those things around it, but there's steps. It's not an overnight process. It's a long process in love that leaves a doorway for someone always to come back and they know it. Mm -hmm. Right? So there is a time and a place. But here's the question I believe we should be asking. Is God, how do we, you know, the Bible says we're called to the ministry of reconciliation. They are a lost, broken people. How do we, how do we reconcile them to Christ? Amen. Amen. Not how do I deal with them. Well, not how do I, how do I, God, how do I reconcile that broken person to Christ? Man, I feel the anointing. Amen. You see, we know the law. The law says they're going to split hell wide open. And we know that. There's that. I'm not denying that. I'm not going to, I'm going to tell them that. But they need to know that I love them. See, what happens a lot of times when you say, uh, well, I hate the sin, but I love the person. Man, if you're concentrating on hating something before you love something, you're already walking, walking in the wrong way. If you're concerned about reconciling them, then you have a genuine care about that person, that soul. The enemy's telling them they're being beaten, mistreated, destroyed. Every year alive, but all the lies first started when they, they said that they, God born, made, made them that way. And that means that God made a mistake and God never makes mistakes. So to reconcile them means they have to come to the point of whatever that first doorway was, it opened them up to that spirit that took possession of them that caused them to turn to that lifestyle. And you're going to have to probably love on somebody in the wall. They're probably going to be ugly, nasty to you. They're going to say stupid things to you. They're going to do hurtful things to you. They're going to try to get you to respond ugly. Because if you respond ugly, that means what you're saying isn't real. So that means you're going to have to take some abuse. You're going to have to be the law that stands in front of them, but also the grace and mercy that embraces them. And I believe those are both things working at the same time. And it's the same things he's talking about here. That takes wisdom. Do I know how to how to bring in the ministry of reconciliation to that whole group of people? No, but I'm smart enough to ask the man that does. I'm smart, smart enough to realize that that is the key answer. Everybody's given all these answers. I, I've never heard anybody say that that's the answer, to be honest with you. I'm not trying to say I'm all that. I'm just saying that's what God spoke to me, and it spoke to my very core of my being. I mean, we go after, we, we, and we go after, we've had them here before. It's not like we haven't, and I'm not telling them, but, but we, go, we, we go after broken people. I never seen a place that said, "Well, only, only, only this type of broken apply." <laughs> and you know what? Broken people doesn't even have a pocket. It doesn't have a. It doesn't have a price demographic. People thinks it does. I've seen them from from the filthy rich down to the the people sleeping on the sidewalk. Broken's broken. But we're in the God has charged every person to have the ministry of reconciliation. But if you're not keeping your commandments yourself, how are you going to ever show somebody else how to keep them? Look, it did tie all together. Amazing, huh? And that is why it's so important. Because then they're what well, they're going to see? They're going to see wisdom in you. They're going to see somebody that's not being callous, somebody that's not just trying to make a, a notch on their gun belt to say, "Oh, look, I converted a, I converted a lesbian." <laughs> I get so tired of hearing that. Well, Lord, I just believe a new one of these two. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I mean, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. All right. And so that is a that is you know my son do not forget my teachings but let but let your heart keep my commandments. How many of you know God wants you to keep them? It's not a suggestion, but how many believe God wants you to see it? People, I, I think you know people want you to be able to see it and see it. That, listen, the Bible says his, his the, keeping his commandments is not grievous. 
If you're portraying how hard it is to be a Christian, you're saying that it's grievous to serve God. Now you may have hard times, but that is because the enemy's robbed you of your hope and robbed you of your faith and robbed you of your joy and you need to come and have a reconciliation of your own and get refilled, have a time of revival with God so that you can have a right heart to show people that serving God isn't hard. Amen? Amen? And so, I just want to, I'm about to move on off of this one, but I, I, I think it's so vital that we do this. He, he's talking to his kids. You know, and I, I believe God is raising us up. You know, isn't it time that the church actually be a church of reconciliation? Amen. Now, listen, I, there's people that's left here that chose to stay in that lifestyle. And they have said horrible things about me. They've made, you know, and they found other people to agree with it and say this and say that. But you know what I know? They're hurting people that finds other hurting people to say hurtful things. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. You know what? It hasn't changed my love for them one bit. They'd probably be shocked about that. I still pray for them on a daily basis because they're still bound. <laughs> this thing is, church, when they come around you, you can't embrace them even if you're having a bad day. Because that'll get in your spirit, and it'll be harmful to you, and you got to keep pointing in the light. You you don't got to take my side; you just got to take God's side. But if you're my armor bearer, you probably should, or God's going to deal with you nasty. That's, <laughs> that's for you. Not, that's not about me. That's for you, and I mean that with love. I mean, <laughs> the word that's the word has something to say about that. Amen. But we're, I just want to see them reconcile. How many are ready to see some people reconcile to Christ? Yeah. You know, you know. I hate all sin, but and if we're going to hate sin, let's hate it all. That means we're going to have to start hating some stuff about ourselves. <laughs> if we're going to be that that vehement about hating sin, you know, then let's start hating some stuff about ourselves. Yeah. And if you start getting that way, it'll start cleaning you up, and you'll start doing this. You know, sin is sin. But there is a difference between iniquity, and I do believe that homosexuality falls more into an iniquity case, but that's a whole other message, because I believe they're bound. But I believe they got there over many small choices. You know how you get closer to God? One step at a time. You know how you get away from God? One step at a time. Amen. All right. Verse 2. Reese, Allison, Deb, Bonnie, Heather, Isaiah. Is that all of them? Do I need one more? All right, Sister Joyce. of life and peace they will add to you. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. My teaching will give you a long and prosperous life. Man, does that sound good or what? Sounds good to me. <laughs> now, when you talk about keeping God's commandments these days, and you know, this is not usually the next subject that comes up, unfortunately, is it? But this is the promises of God. Now, what's the first uh, first commandment with a promise? Anybody? Honor your, Honor your parents and your days will be long upon this earth. You hear that, kids? Yeah. Yeah. Honor your parents and your days will be long. You don't want to live long? Then be disobedient. <laughs> but uh, that's the first commandment with a promise. But listen... I know this seems kind of redundant, but do, are you guys getting how phenomenal it is that your days and your life will be long and have peace and they're going to be full? They're going to be well. That means that you're going to have a full... How many like peace? Amen. How many like that, having just that full life, mm -hmm. that abundant life? And see, he says, if you'll do these things, this is the life. I'm, he didn't say it could. He didn't say it, it should. He, he didn't say it might. He said, this is, this is what happens when you do this. Do you see that? Is, is there no wonder why the enemies tried to undermine the commandments of God so much? 
Because what happens to people that start living peaceful, full, well-meaning lives? Do you think you can talk them into doing something stupid? Do you think you're going to talk them out of the goodness of God? No, they're not moving. So he, he couldn't get them, so he went, he was, went back and he's tried to get people to think that, well, I really don't got to keep those commandments. They're more of a suggestion. And people may not outright say that, but they say that. I actually have had people outright say that, but I've had a lot of other people that's alluded to it. You know, they start trying to pick and choose which ones they want. <laughs> they'll, they'll ask my opinion on something, I'll give them a verse, and they'll say, well, that was for the Old Testament. Oh, really? <laughs> one, of the, one of the favorite ones, and when you finally get in deep into that, and there's, there's actually been some denominations that split over it, but remember when I told you Jesus kind of rewrites a few, a couple of them, and uh, and there's so much deep stuff that you can get into. But start just bring up the day of the Sabbath. The Bible said keep the Sabbath and make it holy. So everybody starts saying it's Saturday. Well, when you go back into the old calendars, it actually is Sunday. But then you have people that disagree upon that. Trust me, I've searched it all out. But and here, but here's the key. Even about that, Jesus, his own disciples, was out in the, in the in the wheat and cornfields, having getting something to eat on Sunday. And he said, listen, don't be worrying about them. And anyways, to make a long story short, I get tons of words. Jesus said, listen, whatever day you choose to honor me is holy. And so that was Jesus. And Jesus spoke it plain. So, you know, we could choose, when we first founded this church, we met on Friday nights. So God spoke to me deeply and profoundly and scarily. And I moved, oh, I, I moved open on Sunday mornings. And guess what he did? He opened a new level of glory whenever we came to Sundays. But you know what? He still met us on people who were still saved when we met on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. Now, do I believe that Sunday is the day, holy day? Yes, I do from everything that I've studied. But what I've learned is people could call whatever day of the week they wanted and meet with God with intention and God would meet them there. Because that's what he said he would do in the New Testament. But that doesn't, you can't use that to do away with all the other stuff that he gave you. And he gave it to you for wisdom. You know, you can check out everything he said, and every one of them was for wisdom. And the church today, they've it's, they've tried to become so comfortable with culture that they've they've done away with most of these things. And how many of got? No, I mean, we're supposed to change the culture, not let the culture change us. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if the world can't tell a difference between the church and you, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And more than that, there should be something on the inside more than the outside. But how do you know if you get enough of him on the outside, it'll matter how you dress on the outside too. Mm -hmm. That's something else. But that's free. So, listen, we're seeing work. Man, he's promised this phenomenal life if we'll keep his commandments. <coughs> how, how awesome. Doesn't that just kind of make you happy inside? Yeah. Yep. I mean, it, it just kind of frees it all up, you know. I remember when I started doing, reading all the thou knots and the shall knots and the can knots, I thought, oh my Lord, I'm not going to be able to do any knot. <laughs> you know? I, I'm like, Lord, I don't even know where to start. And he said, just start. Just start following me. And I, honestly, I'm going I'm to be real honest with some of you. There was things that I did when I was just saved that if I would do now, God would beat me with a stick. <laughs> Big stick. But I honestly didn't know no better at the time. I was doing the best I could, and His grace and mercy empowered me to change. And the more I learned of Him, the more I came to know Him, the more I began to look and act like Him. But why? Because I got more of His law. But guess what happened? My life also got more blessed. That's the part nobody wants you to hear. As I followed Him, as I responded to Him, my life got more and more blessed, and things got less and less hard. But he didn't just zap me and go, you're an instant perfected creation of mine. I was a new creation and a new body. I had new ways and I had new powers and new abilities. And I had an enemy that was trying to convince me to come back. But I didn't. I wasn't full of wisdom yet. And as I got full of wisdom, I started learning to walk in his ways better and better and better. And you know what? I had tons of knowledge when I was a young kid. And the Holy Ghost helped me to a lot of that. And then I, to be honest, as a young baby Christian, back when I was still trying not to preach, I remembered a verse that said you're only accountable for what you knew, so I figured if I didn't know nothing, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
he, the scripture. <laughs> he didn't let that fly for the record. He said, fine. I'll bring to remembrance everything you ever knew. Oh. And he did. I was like, <laughs> and the long story. So, verse 3, who wants to read? Sister Debbie, Sister Debbie, Sister Deb. <laughs> I'm just going to give everybody a number. <laughs> no, just That's it. How, how impersonable is that? <laughs> My pastor number, guys. <laughs> Will you remember the numbers? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Whatever I call you at that time. <laughs> Sister Deb, Sister, Sister Rebecca, brother, right? Allison, Isaiah Reese, Heather. How, how many more do I need? One more. One more. Sister Becky. I'm trying to go by who puts their hands up at the first. <laughs> beginning. So. Isaiah did too? Oh, okay. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. Never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Don't lose your grip on love and loyalty. Tie them around your neck. Carve their initials on your heart. Don't let kindness and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. Tie them around your neck and write them on your heart. That's it. Amen. And Bryce, if you ever want to read, you got to put your hand up way big because I can't hardly see you back there. So if I've missed you, I'm sorry. All right. So let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Or let not loyalty and faithfulness. Let not love. So all of these things are what? What do you think? What's that sound like to you? What's that remind you of? In the, in the, new, in the, in the new Testament. The fruit, the, the fruit of the Spirit. So, and, but then I also like how they also threw in loyalty and faithfulness. How many know that the Bible says to be faithful in the small things? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a big thing they want to do, but nobody wants to start off doing the small things. Amen. How many know God wants us to be faithful in those things? But kindness and truth, never let them go. Put them on, on your heart. So that when, you, when I, what I see and when, I, when he says that is he's actually make them part of who you are. Not something that you do, but part of who you are. See, when something's written on my heart, it's no longer just something, not something coming out of it. It's part of my heart. It's who I am. Kindness, faithfulness, loyalty, mercy, and truth. And so if you get, when you get enough of the Word of God in you, it, and it's being that mirror to you, this will become just part of who you are. I can remember years ago when I first started this, uh, the Lord had challenged me. It first started, if anybody asked you something, if anybody asked me anything, I, I didn't tell them this, but he wanted me to find a verse to respond to that. So I would do that, and I didn't always tell the person, because you know not everybody wants a verse to everything they ask you. <laughs> but I, I would answer them. But I'd start that inside, and eventually it started with everything going on in my life, I'd apply a verse to it, to the point now that I don't have to think about it the Word of God just comes up, and that is how my, how I respond to it. It's become part of who I am. And someone will say, well, that, he dealt with that real biblically. I'm like, oh, yeah, praise God. That's what's, that, that's what's controlling me. That's, what, you know, that, that's where I'm drawing from. You know, I'm not drawing from Grandma and Grandpa Chuck's uh, good wisdom that told me, you know, <laughs> who, who got it from the Word of God, who got it from their great-grandmother who was spirit-filled, you know. I'm not getting a dribbling of it down. I've got the whole counsel of God inside me. 
And by the way, that's also, I believe, how our country got so far away. So there were, there were many men and women of God that had the whole counsel of God, and they passed on the counsel, but their kids didn't maintain it. So they only had a part counsel, and another person had another part of the counsel. Mm -hmm. So now we're so far gone that nobody's got any, and they've lost common sense. <laughs> Amen. So let not this depart from your heart. Amen. So, how many see where God wants these things to become part of who you are, part of your DNA? Now, how long do you think it takes to meditate for it becomes part of your DNA? A while. You, you need it, to marinate. <laughs> yeah, you need to marinate. You know, someone, some, I've heard some preachers preach that when you get all this when you get Christ. Well, that may be. But, you know, then where would he tell us to study to show yourself approved? A workman rightly dividing the Word of God. I believe we get full access to all these things, but I believe, like I've said many times through this teaching already, as you get this, you're just giving the Holy Spirit more of a vocabulary to speak to you. But now we see what kind of impact it actually starts having inside your heart. Amen? Amen. So, I mean, this stuff really impacts you, but it, you know, it don't happen overnight. When you start, do, do you think you, uh, when you, the first time you cut a tree down, do you get it instantly to kindling? It takes a little while, don't it? And it takes something called process. Amen? And, and so, you know, how I many you know, I also believe that's another, we, we can apply that verse that says, do not despise small beginnings, because sometimes when we really start trying to work and get the Word of God in us, we get discouraged because our nuggets don't look like somebody else that we may be mentoring and that we may have in the spirit realm by us. They're like, well, they read that and they got this, and I read that and I got this. Well, don't despise small beginnings. You got that. And that, what you got is not part of who you are if you don't let it go. That's your revelation. You know, there's a time and place that, there, there was a time, and, and I, some people are out there, and I, and I don't embrace them at all, but there's been a few men of God, they've started sharing some revelations with me, and it just didn't jive with me. And then there's been others, and I've just had to tell them, brother, I, I don't, I'm not doubting you heard from God, I just don't have the same revelation. I can't tell them that what they heard wasn't from God. I just know that I haven't had that. I'm not going to take nothing from them, but please don't be upset with me if I don't embrace that because I don't have that for myself yet. <coughs> see, that's also called wisdom yeah. and maturity when you deal with things. Amen? Amen? But God wants you to have those... those get, it's great to get nuggets from Him. I mean, that's why you come to church. That's my job to put nuggets in you. But my job is also to train you to start getting your own nuggets. That's what's called making disciples. That's called growing you up. If you came here and you were the same shape you was when you got here, I would not truly be a pastor. Pastors should grow you up. Amen. 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 And so... Moving along, verse uh, 4. Who wants to read? Sister Bonnie, Sister Allison, Deb, Isaiah, Reese. Two more. Huh? Two more. Two more. Rebecca and Heather. The, I'll get you next time, Sister Joyce. Okay. I forgot. Uh, forgive me. Okay, that's okay. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Then you will find favor and high regard in the sight of God and man. Earn a reputation on the living well in God's eyes and the eyes of the people. So shall thou find favor and good understanding. So you will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. If you if you do this, both God and people will be pleased with you. Oh my goodness, don't that just make you want to jump up and shout? Amen. Amen. I'm gonna I don't know about anybody else, but I'm sweating bullets. Amen. So, 
How many, you know, there's another verse. How many know what Luke 2.52 says? Yeah, you'll grow in wisdom and favor and stature with God and man. The same way that Jesus did. And I, I read it to some people and they're like, well, that's for Jesus. Well, I'm like, well, obviously you've never read Proverbs chapter 3. <laughs> well, you know, because Jesus was just following what had already, he, he was producing the perfect example of living the life that was written before. He said so he was God and man. And so he was walking in the fullness of the scriptures then. Amen. Do you all see how pa what pastor's saying? Mm -hmm. you, you know, and so... We see where, how many would like to have some favor? We're just Amen. walking around and, you know, but he said, how many would like to have favor with the God of the universe? Amen. Amen. How many know you see where he wants you to have it with God and man? How many understand why the enemy doesn't want you to learn wisdom, law, and commandments? There's a reason behind it. How, look at the awesome promises that are associated with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually when people ask for prayer, they're like, well, I need favor. I need wisdom. I need understanding. I'm, I'm just all across the altar calls. I pray all around the world. You hear a lot of consistent things. And you don't have time to preach to them and teach them that, well, are you, you ask them, are you right with God? Oh, yeah. Are you serving God? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> and maybe some of them are. But maybe some of them, God's going, Hello. I'm trying to get your attention. If you use some wisdom, you know. Yeah. You know I can't tell you how many people. I, I know people that I love that like, well, God told me to build this house. So they went and borrowed on everything they had, every part of their ministry, everything else, and put half a million dollars in it, and then can't pay for it, and called it faith. <laughs> and then wonder where God's at. God's like, I gave you wisdom. You know, we're going to see in Proverbs where he, he talks all about money. He talks about everything. Every issue of life. Even just in Proverbs, he talks about it. And he'll address it. And if you, if you just do these things, he says, you'll have favor. People will be going, man, do they got the Midas touch or what? <laughs> now, did he promise it would be easy? But he promised that if you would keep these things, if you keep them close to your heart, keep the right attitude through them, that this is what would happen constantly. Not every once in a while. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, and I've seen it in my own life. Sometimes I get shocked. My kids, they go wherever they go, they got somebody, and I don't mean everywhere, but just people want to bless my family. Mm -hmm. You know? People that don't even know them, I should say. I'm thankful for the church and everybody that sows into my family. It means the world to me. But I mean, we just, no matter where we go, somebody wants to bless them. Somebody wants to bless us. You know, I don't, I don't think that's... See, and a lot of times people get prideful when that starts happening. They, they will operate in the, in, the, in the will of God. They, they work hard to apply the principles. But then when it starts happening, that age-old thing called pride roots its head and they start thinking it's all about them and they forget that it's just the grace of God keeping his word and I realize it's just it's, it's, it's a byproduct of me living my life for him and it's what he promised amen and I want you guys to realize that listen we're going to this is we're about to wrap up for the evening we're going to take some things but I want you guys to realize these are promises that are yes and amen I mean, we, we talked about some hard stuff getting to this point, did we not? About how you got to change and all the stuff you got to do. But look at the look at the promises. Who wouldn't want this in your life? I mean, you know, you start thinking about all the law and all that stuff, you know. And he he didn't he he's not a taskmaster. He's up there a line love kind. Uh, love, kind, heavenly Father who's wanting to enable you, to teach you, to instruct you. And he may give you a spanking when you go the wrong way, but it's going to be because you see the law. If you if you got the law in you, before you ever get the spanking, you're going to know you're starting to head the wrong direction. And you'll have wisdom to stop it even ever before you take off in that way. Amen. Wouldn't that be good? Instead of having to wait for the pain? 
You know, I, unfortunately, that's how most most church people react anymore. It's, 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 they don't have any wisdom in them because they've not responded to this. And it's not until they get it, do something wrong, and the pain hits, and they go, "Oh Lord, help!" And then they change. luckily God's gracious and mercy to ask for forgiveness, and they turn, they come out. Of it. I'm just saying, there's a place we don't have to do that. We can have wisdom before we get to that pain place. Right. You know. And you can ask my bride this, no matter what conversation we have, and she probably gets tired of it sometimes. I don't think I've ever met anybody like me. That's what that was her words, not mine. <laughs> As I, I, something you'll hear me say a lot of, well, what's the word say about that? Well, what's the word say about that? And some people say, well, I want to tell you what I want to feel. Well, no offense, I don't really care what you have to say. <laughs> I want to know what the word says. When you can tell me how the word applies to this situation, then we can talk. Because we're going to be on the same page. And there's going to be a wholesome outcome from it. Are you all seeing that? Now, listen, I'm not telling you to be rude to your loved ones. I haven't been able to But there, you know, if you're talking about church stuff, if you're talking about vision going forward, you're talking about all these things, lots of people have lots of good ideas. There's nothing wrong with that. But just for me, if you're going to come talk to me, I'm going to, I'm going to believe you've already filtered it through this thing that we're talking about here. And you're going, to, you're going to have some wisdom from God about what He says. Right. And then I'm going to share with you what I believe He's saying through the wisdom of God. And guess what? We'll have a flowing conversation. <laughs> Now, do you always have to have it together? No, that's why I'm pastor. And you can come to me and I'll do my best to give you the wisdom that I'm hearing from God. But I can't give, make you have ears to hear. Because what he, what the wisdom of God says may not always jive with what you want. Or it may, he may have something better for you that's just right around the corner. I don't mean, it's not always derogatory. I just, I just, the reason why I say that I think so much is because so many across the board today is people just, telling everybody what they want to hear and nobody bold enough to give them the whole truth and then people aren't getting the lives that they're not getting to live this mm -hmm. that we're seeing. I just want to be the man of God that gives it to people straight, pure, unadulterated so that you get to live this life. You get to live it with, with, with favor and living well and, and people holding you to high regard and having understanding uh, doesn't, I mean, that's the life I want for you as your pastor. Yeah. You know, I want I want that whenever someone talks about you around town, I want the, I want the, to be held in high regard. And that's what God promises you. You know, there's no there's no twelve basic course. There's there's staying in the Word, letting it marinate inside you, and holding yourself to it, and letting it change you slowly over time. And then all of a sudden you'll wake up one day. Listen, I've not arrived, but I can tell you I've got a lot more of this operating in my life than what I had when I first started. There's a whole lot more people that, well, I, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, really. There's a whole lot more people that like me now than they used to dislike me, but I, I started to say that I don't know, the enemy's been working hard. Man. But most people that meet me don't, don't instantly dislike me, you know, because I, not because of who I am, but because of the God in me. Amen. Amen. So I hope you're seeing tonight that the promises of God, this isn't just like hard work, just a drudge to try to get through something. This is an awesome life that God has for you. And he's given you some phenomenal promises if you'll walk it out, if you apply the wisdom of God. And, you know, in these last days, as things get darker and darker, and by the way, it seems like everybody and their brother is focusing on the darkness God never told us to look into the darkness. He said, look up into the hills where cometh thy help. Mm -hmm. And the hills is a light. And the Bible promises as it gets darker, his, his light's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. And perfect light cast out all dark. Perfect love cast out all darkness. Perfect light also cast out all darkness. That translates back in both places when you break it down. And so I, I just want you to know that, you know, we're, if we do these things, we won't have to worry about combating darkness. It'll be running from us wherever we're at. Mm -hmm. The whole rest of the world may be getting darker, but wherever we're at, it's going to run like a bunch of rats in the night. 
skimming around because my, my light's going to shine bright. And it's just going to penetrate everything that comes around. I don't have to worry, oh, it's getting darker. Oh, it's creeping up over there on Fred. <laughs> Do you all see what I'm saying? And, it, and, and the people that get consumed with this stuff, they're, they're not worried. Listen, but this is how we make our lights bright. This is how God, the Word God's given us that, so that, it, it, you know, we don't have to worry about darkness consuming us. It's sad to see. It's sad to watch. I don't enjoy watching it, but I want to be so bright that anybody that comes near me, they get their eyes open to the goodness of God. So, you know, that's how you become a ministry of reconciliation. Shining so bright from God, it permeates every pit of darkness that's in someone. I do have to also say this whole sloppy agape, just love them to God thing, that didn't, always, that didn't work either. It made a huge mess of the church, and the church was compromised for it. Why? Why, why do you think that happened? What did we just read in the last three chapters? And not all that was thrown out the window during that movement, wasn't it? So, I, I hope everybody here by now knows their pastor's all about love, you know, and, and reconciliation. But don't throw wisdom and common sense out with it. Amen? Amen. So, how many know that someone that has favor with God and man in well regard, no matter how dark it is, they stand out from the crowd? Don't you think those are the people God's really calling up in these last days? People that are just full of the wisdom of God. And you know what happens when somebody figures out you got it? When their world's upside down, they're going to start calling. Hey, uh, can you pray for me? I thought you didn't even like me. <laughs> it's happened a lot, hasn't it, Pastor Timmy? <laughs> Some of the ones that cussed you out and told everybody how worthless she was and they got to the end of the rope and they'll be the one on the call to see if you don't keep your life right you won't be able to be in a place where you'll be able to minister to them because you'll still be hung up on what they said. Big smile. Well, I'm in rare form of that, Pastor Tim. Not so rare anymore. <laughs> Not so rare anymore, Sister Hudson. Amen. All right. So who... uh? We're gonna, what did you all get from tonight's rambling to know really? I, I, th I thought it was some good teaching. Uh, what did you all get from tonight? Sister Bonnie. He doesn't like your comments, your feedback, your opinion, or and I, any ideas on how to do it better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Really, Kevin. It's not just a suggestion anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. not just a, amen. Just a, Pastor Tammy. Amen. Good stuff. Sister Heather. Make the word of God part of who you are, not what you do. It's who you are by letting the word of God be a mirror to you. Amen. Good stuff. Sister Shana. Amen. 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 Yeah. Good stuff. Anybody else tonight? Who, who wants to go next? Somebody that hasn't went yet. So we don't take their nuggets. Sister Rebecca. I want to. I want to hear from everybody again. I just. Uh, hey, I'm still working on that. I don't. I, I believe it's a lifelong calling. You want me to tell you the truth? I don't think you ever arri arrive. If I ever meet anybody that says I'm full of God's wisdom, I've got all that I could have. Would you like to have some? I'm gonna roll as far as I can. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sister Joyce. Try my best to keep my heart right and to keep and not figure out things on my own. Let God figure it out. Amen. Good stuff. Good wisdom there. Yeah. Somebody else tonight that hasn't went. Go on once. Sister Becky. Um, God talks about every issue like in Proverbs and that's where his promises are yes and amen. Amen. Isn't that so good? I mean, seriously, it, who in here hasn't had an issue in life? 
Isn't it it's so comforting that God's going to give us wisdom for every issue of life, that we can have favor and blessings and it'll be good? I, I mean, that just makes me want to scream at the top of my lungs. And I, I, these are things that I've known for a long time, but just refreshing them again, I get so almost giddy inside. I pray that's coming across to you all. I mean, I'm so ecstatic that every issue of life, man, I got wisdom, how to, not, just to, not just how to overcome it, but to prosper it, you know? You know, the doctors, when they say this or this happens or, you know, especially with children anymore, everybody says, well, that's just how kids are. Well, you have now obviously not read the word. All right. Any, Sister Alice. Uh, just to not let the circumstances determine our attitudes, but have our attitude change. Amen. That is life-changing stuff right there. All right, anybody else can open it up the floor. All right, it's open to anyone now. Sister Heather. Okay, uh, rehearse the Word of God and know the law in order to get wisdom and then keep a happy balance between the law and grace. Amen. Let me get to Pastor Taylor. Um, you, you, when you were touching um, sexuality, just opening our Yeah, I Yeah, I, I really pray that minister to you, uh, Sister Rebecca. Yeah. Um, one thing earlier when you was talking, I really stuck with me that says when you really forgive someone, you don't replay it in your mind. And when you was talking about getting a word in you, even though I wasn't saved at the time, we had to learn the Ten Commandments. You know, thou shalt not kill. And to be honest, that's what kept me from killing my dad. Well, thank goodness for the Word. I did have that gun pointed to his head. Well, thank goodness for the Word. And that's it. What came to my mind, thou shalt not kill. Yeah. He'll, he'll use it. Sister Bonnie. Well, a verse that talks about you'll grow in... in favor and success with God and man, that's how God can move you into a position of being an influential person in your yes. society. And I believe he wants every one of us. Just the only 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 thing I would hedge on that is don't let society tell you what is a successful, right. influential person. Right. Right. Because I've seen janitors in places that were more successful and influential than the CEOs. Right. Hey man, I, I totally agree. I just sometimes though, let's be honest that we, if we're not careful, any of us, you know, myself included, you can, you can, the enemy will tell you, well, well, you're not really influential or successful until you get this, this, and this. You know. Well, I mean, God can use you to influence. Oh no, I know. Yeah. I heard exactly what you're saying. I was just using that to expound upon. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's some people that look at us and they look at me as pastor. You know and they know I had other opportunities and they're like, well, he's not very successful this, this, mm -hmm. this, and this. And I had a, well, I'll, I'll just go and tell you who it was. Brother Tommy Scott, he, the other day, uh, he called me and I guess someone had said something. He said, I just told him that your ministry's won more souls to the Lord than any of theirs clumped up together so they can keep their <laughs> mouth shut and and, uh, and roll on. And uh, uh, it was more he said. But he, he, he did not say it disrespectful and if you know Brother Tommy, but he, uh, Anyways, uh, I was using myself as an illustration because even sometimes I can look around and go, Lord, am I doing what you called me to do? But then that would say that you guys were not the most important people in the world to him, and I know that you are, and you are to me. So then the, if you guys are growing in God and you're better than you were when you met me, then I'm doing my job. These promises are only for the uh, for those that are listening. Yeah, for yeah, for it's blood bought. Yeah. Anybody else? You ever had? Uh, yeah. Um, just that there's wisdom for everything if you study to show yourself. Yeah. Did you all catch that? Mm -hmm. Wisdom for everything if you study to show yourself. You know, so many times we think it's only about spiritual things. I'm telling you, you're going to be blown away as we go through Proverbs where God deals with every issue of life. It's going to blow your mind. 
it, it blew mine the first time. It still it blew mine the hundredth time. It still blows it now. How he looked ahead and everything you're going to deal with, he gave you wisdom for it. Mm -hmm. It's just it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. But so if you ever catch yourself saying, "Well, I don't know how," or "That's impossible," just you, you need to correct your saying. I, well, I must not have that revelation yet. God, give me some revelation upon this as I study. Mm -hmm. And what's that, Sister Bob? I don't see how. Yeah, I don't see how. You know, there's some things he's having me so into right now in the natural. I don't see how, but you know what? Uh, every time I've listened to him, he's done above and beyond. You know. Mm -hmm. So, was there? I didn't want to miss. Okay. No matter what you're going through, the Word of God always has something to say about it. Amen. Bring you out of it. Every time. Anyone else? I don't want to close down. Well, it sounds like you all got a lot out of tonight. Mm -hmm. I, I interjected a lot into this tonight, but I believe it was all applied, applicable to what we were studying. Um, so, as you go this week, I, I'd like it if you guys would read along at least the chapter we're in every week until we get through it. You can do your other Bible studies, but just just meditate in it. Amen. You might have something. Listen, this is Bible study. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share all the nuggets God gives me. I'm going to do my best to break it down for you. But uh, I'm. There, no one ever said you couldn't share something God had showed you. That's what's called Bible study. Amen. Amen. So study. You might have something to offer to the group next week. Amen. Amen. And I'm not, but here's the thing also, I'm not putting pressure that you got to have something. I'm <laughs> just saying, if you do, there will give you plenty of opportunity to share. I remember sometimes that I, that when I was much younger, I, it was like pressure. Oh, i got to find something, you know. <laughs> Don't give me that. Way. Amen. All hearts clear tonight? Amen. Everybody good? Amen. Amen. How many know Jesus loves you? Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Well, Lord, we thank you for your word tonight, God. Lord, I thank you for the people that's come. Lord, I pray it'll bear fruit in their souls, minds, bodies, and spirits, 30, 60, 100 fold. God, I pray for just an almost an instantaneous increase in wisdom, favor, and stature with God and man in their lives as they start becoming into an understanding of who you are and who they are in you, God. And God, I thank you, God, that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. And God, I thank you for supplying the needs for the church. Lord, I thank you for supplying the needs for every member here. And Lord, I thank you for supplying the needs, God, for my family. And God, today we put an expectation, God, upon even more revelation. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. You can come out.